Adam, uh, tell us about the landing. All right, Greg. Um, I can't tell you too much about it. I'm being a little flip. Uh, in short, it looked extremely clean. Uh, we had, uh, yeah, we had, uh, we had, we touched down in conditions that were our, um, the, by, by the way, I want to preface everything. This is preliminary data scooped with the sieve in the cacophony of the control room, control room during the celebration. <laughs> Right? And largely by my good friend Miguel San Martin, who's somewhere out there. I hope. At any rate, a remarkably good, uh, um, our navigation error was, uh, was on the low side of our expectation. So uh, it looked good, in short. Good and clean. Beautiful. They're really beautiful. What, uh, I have to ask you, what kind of file type, can you tell us about the image file type and compression that was used to send this very important uh, couple of thumbnails back from Mars? Yes, unfortunately, I absolutely cannot. <laughs> if Justin Mackey is in the room, or there's a couple other people on the team who'd be able to whip that out quickly, but I, I don't, couldn't tell you. Sorry. Are you going to call your daughter Curiosity? <laughs> <laughs> okay, a serious question. A little more than 48 hours ago, you told me you would tell me a secret. Once Curiosity landed. Can I have my secret? Yeah, what was this? A lot has happened in the last 48 hours. <laughs> and to be very truthful, I do not recall what that secret was for the landing that go down to something like five decimal points. Um, I just wanted to confirm with you that, that, those, those, that you do have them, have those sort of coordinates. And am I reading those coordinates correctly when I see that it looks as though you landed within 500 meters of the uh, skirt around the mountain? That, I mean, you're really very close to the mountain at the closer end in the landing ellipse and possibly within striking distance of the phyllosilicate trench. I, can, I can't confirm that. Um, my estimate, I'm looking for somebody. Yes, there's somebody in the audience here who has that. I try to have bulletproof logic and uh, make this simple and not look crazy uh, because it can be easily taken that way. You know what I'm saying? This is a serious position and there's scientific and physical evidence of it. Um, literally mainstream media admits, and uh, well, Einstein admitted in relativity that a geocentric system is completely kinematically equal to a heliocentric system. They're both completely viable based on observational data. Actually, it only suggests that we are at the center of the universe based on observations of the sky, their movements, and the cosmic microwave background. So like th this is the, like, if you understand like the mainstream talking points, like they're starting to say gravity doesn't even exist because of, it's not working on the quantum scale for so long. Like they're starting to say dark matter doesn't exist, which was how we reconciled relativity being off by 95% of galaxy cluster rotations. It's just, it's a joke. Once you actually physically stick your head in these books and realize the claims and, the, and try to verify the claims that are being made, you'll understand that modern astronomy is metaphysics. It's not science anymore. Anything else? Um, yeah, just another question that pops up. Not necessarily just about flat Earth, but why do you think that they block you from going to the poles? Because you would discover something that they're not claiming to be there. I don't. I think the North Pole is not just water. That's what they're claiming is there. It's just water. I would never say. I'm, obviously, I don't know it's there, right? I explained to you earlier uh, that you, you, we'd have to go there to say what's there. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't say uh, definitively what's there. But I think it's quite interesting that our ancestors were drawing maps like this 
as the North Pole with a magnetic mountain at the center. Obviously, I don't know if this is there. I would never tell you. You know what, man? This is for sure there. Let's go up there. Let's find it. I don't know it's there, but it's definitely interesting. We have multiple maps being generated by our ancestors uh, from different cultures that, you know, they didn't have cell phones to talk to each other and stuff like that, where uh, we have this as the center of the earth. And now they say it's Bart. Is the world flat? Is the world flat? Yes. I don't know. What do you think? I, I never thought about it, Whoopi. Have if a mind. my son says to you, Mom, is the world round or flat? And I'll have to go, baby, we got to go to the library yes. and, and find some books. I watched the show where you said to Whoopi, you didn't know that the earth was round. And I agree with you. I was in school. That's a very long time ago. We got her, we got her globe since then. But I got to tell you, I went for a walk the other day on the yeah. beach. Oh, and it does appear that the world is flat. I'm telling you. I'm saying to myself, she's right. She's right. Okay. I mean, really. I, you know, everyone acts like they know, everyone acts like they know better. Yeah. Dude, y'all seen this video right here, man? Look at the sun and tell me how is it doing that. I mean, really. I'll wait. So, take a look at this right here now. I want you to keep watching this video because the further the video goes, the more you're going to question things. Alright? Here we go. Can anybody explain that right there? I mean, y'all are a lot of people want to say this. I'm not, I can't even really, I have to be so vague on my post because, yeah. What do y'all think though? Y'all just give me your opinion on this. As you can see, the more time goes on, the further the sun goes down, but it appears to be going through the clouds. What do y'all think? Wow, wow, stuff. Another group crashing video. You can't have a pressurized system without a solid barrier. Mentors. Right, and I'm gonna put these mentors in this balloon. Okay, so I have five mentors in here. Five mentors. So all I'm gonna do is just to put them in here. Okay. 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 Every pressurized system needs a container. You see that? <coughs> You see, we have uh, gases here, and we have this uh, liquid here, right? We still have the cork up here, right? But there's a separation here. That's why I always say that pressure is force, right? You see, there is no seal here. Gravity is not able to pull this liquid down here. Have you ever wondered what actually causes our tides on planet Earth? Now supposedly it is the moon revolving around Earth and it's causing our tides to sway in and out because of the gravitational pull. Now I'm not sure if that makes a lot of sense because wouldn't cats and dogs also be flying into the sky when this happens? Wouldn't we be pulled by the moon's gravitational pull? So the second theory is that there is a whirlpool at the center of our North Pole, which no one can explore the North Pole. Did you know that? Yeah, no one can explore the North Pole and there is a whirlpool in the center that vortexes in for six hours, low tide, vortexes out in the opposite direction, high tide. So it's creating this pulsing, this radial wave throughout the oceans. Now our heart also does the exact same thing. It is one giant vortex muscle that pulls the blood in, oxygenates it, and spits it back out in a vortex spiraling fashion. So could this whirlpool in the center of our flat plane be the heart of our Earth? Now, of course, I'm just a conspiracy theorist and I'm making all of this up, but look into radial waves. 
perhaps that's what our tides are, radial waves. And of course the wind can affect things as well. But I'm making all of this up and the earth is obviously a globe. Of course the moon is real. Can you please stop busting my chops and telling me that the sun is 93 million miles away in outer space and there's all these giant solar flares just combusting off of the surface of this giant ball of gas and fire and that all the other stars are just like the sun because when we look at the sun we can clearly see clouds moving in front of and behind the sun which proves that it's 93 million miles away. Apply a negative filter and it looks even more obvious. And of course, if we look at Venus with a high-powered camera, we can see that it looks like light and sound, just oscillating in the waters above. But of course, that's not what's happening, and it is a rock. Because according to the mainstream model, Venus is actually a giant inhabitable rock that used to be just like Earth approximately 4.5 billion years ago, where it had water and life, possibly, and everything else. And then it became uninhabitable, possibly from humans causing that, right? Because we all know that's what happens. Humans can change the climate. Now all this imagery I'm showing you of Venus orbiting the sun, I mean, doesn't that Venus look just like the Venus that I showed you with that high powered camera? It's almost identical that you can't even tell the difference. But of course guys, this entire video is satire. I made everything up as always, and I have no idea what I'm talking about because Venus is clearly in our solar system. Just kind of explain why we're not getting to see these images live. The Apollo 11 landing was broadcast live. Why right now don't we have the technology to, to see all of this live? This ain't easy. It's not easy. Space is hard, but the moon is hard. And we're getting a picture on the TV. Got a good picture, huh? He's on the moon. And the second man is on the moon. Hey, you got it? That's a good step. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Is that something? We've just got a report from Poland, Czechoslovakia, and Romania that the picture quality there is very good. That's a new live song. They're getting ready to move the TV camera now out to the panorama position. Okay, as far as distance goes, Neil, and we'll line you up again when you finish the panorama. Tell me if you got a picture here. Oh, you got a beautiful picture, Neil. In terms of more media release, um, yes, absolutely. We're working towards improving that, trying to get you surface photos, because I know that everyone's hungry for those surface photos. More cameras. The message is loud and clear. It would be great to get a picture. We have that in the works, so more great imagery from the moon. Video and pretty pictures. We're as eager to see those images as uh, the public is. Obviously, um, you know, imagery, we, we, we love it. We want to share it as much as we can. We want to record it. Um, but if, if we're having issues getting it off of the vehicle. Uh, unfortunately, we just did not have time to go fix that. It's going to take a little bit of time. There is a capacity um, that, that we that we uh, share, you know, and we're, and, and we're being as transparent as we can here. A little slower than we might have wanted. Some hardware problems. It's not pointing at Earth. You know, data flows out of uh, mission control in a very sporadic way. There are many, many other customers, um, science customers, that use the Deep Space Network. It actually slows the effort to, to share things um, with, with the team. I mean, uh, a number of, of uh, uh, issues with file transfers. We did have a number of communications glitches. Uh, we, we had either forward or return link problems. Also, during coast in the zero gravity of environment of space. It's very difficult to, to transmit on the on the fly, if you will, and get that all the way back to Earth. Struggle to get communications. Unfortunately, they're gonna be uh, in the darkness. They will not be sunlit, so we won't uh, get very good video of them. Tip of the iceberg in its beginning uh, for people to realize, wow, this was an incredible success. People telling me how like, oh, it's so funny that you uh, keep saying that we landed on the moon, but you don't even have any pictures to prove it yet. And I'm like, yeah, it's because I don't need a picture to prove it, right? I don't need a picture. They all were saying how we were so Dumb for believing it without any pictures. You're not always going to get pictures. Over a dozen funnies on the list. Issues, challenges, glitches, phenomenon, problems, idiosyncrasies, anomalies. At least they're actually getting things. They're actually getting footage. Why would we? Why, why would they go out there and fake something and then go, oh, we accidentally snapped one of the legs and it's tilted over 30 degrees?
it came in the mail and y'all are opening it with me. <laughs> Ooh. Flat Earth map dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was El Biruni and he lived between 973 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri, from Russia, with suggestions of mine, Idia Lenkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Benjo, I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle, and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tazi, a professional mapmaker came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store now, and order one of the items. I humbly thank you. <laughs>